vet your fields. First problem we'll do is draw or sketch several representative vectors in a given vector field. An easy one, which might be so easy that it becomes hard for people, would be the constant one. F of x, y equals 1i plus 1j. So, component form starts at the origin, and it goes to 1, 1. That's one representative of this vector field. And since it's a constant vector, you can only move it left, right, up, and down. You can't make it longer. You can't rotate it. You can't make it shorter. It has to be the same length going in the same direction. That is, this imaginary angle cannot change. This imaginary angle cannot change. It has to be the same. And the lengths, they all need to be exactly the same. What if you're given f of xy is xi plus yj? Draw a few representatives from this vector field. Well, you can find f of 1, 1, which is 1i plus 1j, which you can put this way, or this way, or this way, or that way. And you can find f of 3, 2, which is 3 plus 3i plus 2j, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, which is right here. So it's that vector, or you can draw it there, or there, or here, or there. Now, I'm not exactly sure how they ended up looking like they're parallel, but they're not. The, the last one that I drew were longer and steeper. Okay. Of course, you can plug in negative numbers, like negative 1, say 2. This is negative i plus 2j, negative 1, 2. It's that vector, or that vector, well, not that one. This vector, or this vector, or that vector. There are some representatives from the vector field. For different xy's, you get different vectors. Now, we want to calculate the gradient now. If so you're given a function of a vector field, 5x squared plus 3xy plus 10y squared. You have to remember is the gradient, in this case of xy, represented by big F. It's the partial of little f with respect to x times i plus the partial of little f with respect to y times j. Of fx, that will be 10x. 3y is a constant times x. The partial will be 3y. That's a constant, so its partial will be 0. Take f sub y. This is a constant. This is 3x, a constant times y. So the partial will be 3x. Plus, this is a pure function of y. So it's 20y. Okay, so we have our answer. The gradient is 10x plus 3y. That's fx times i. Plus fy, which is 3x plus 20y, 3x plus 20y times j. That's the gradient. And you can find the gradient at points. And 
you, you can find the gradient at 2, 3. Just plug in 2 and 3 for x. 2 for x, and I meant to say 3 for y. So finding the gradient is no big deal. Now, sometimes you'll be given a vector field. Sometimes when you're given a vector field, excuse me, sometimes when you're given the gradient, you can find the vector field up to a constant. Sometimes when you're given the gradient, you can find the original function. And there's a test for that. I'm going to see if it's conservative. You want to take the partial of this, you want to take the partial of that with respect to y. You want to take the partial of this with respect to x. And if it's conservative, those two will be equal, and you'll be able to easily find f of x, y. If they're not conservative, then don't even bother trying to find f of x, y. So, instructions are determine, so you're just given this equation, and you're asked to determine if it's conservative, and if so, find a, a potential for little, of, little f of x, y. We call it a potential because it's up to a constant. Well, what is the partial of 2xy with respect to y? Well, 2x is a constant times y. Partial is 2x. The partial of x squared with respect to x is 2x. They are equal. So, it is conservative. It being f of x, y is conservative. Now remember, f of x, y is equal to our f x, i plus f y, j. That is, this here is f x. f sub x is 2 x, y. So f is x squared, y. Now, for the record, fx is really ff, f sub x of xy, and little f is little f of xy. So little f of xy is x squared y plus some constant. And you can double check. I mean, if this is little f, then fx is 2x, and fy is x squared. So the gradient would be fx i plus fy j, which is exactly what it is. So when I'm about to erase, did not need to be done. And the answer is in the box. It's conservative, and I found the potential for f of x y. Possibly, if you are given initial conditions, you can find that constant. How do you like that? Try another one like this. F of x, y is equal to x, e to the x squared, y, times 2y, like that. i plus x squared e to the x squared y j. You want to know if this is conservative or not. So you want to take the partial with respect to y of 2xy e to the x squared y. You want to know if this is equal to the partial with respect to x of this. x squared e to the x squared y. Partial of that with respect to x. 
Okay, this. First, I would say is 2x is a constant. I factor it out. The rest is a product. The partial of the first with respect to y, which is 1, times the second function. Plus the first function, which is y, times the partial of the second with respect to y. The derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything times the derivative of this with respect to y. A constant like x squared times y, the derivative will be x squared. So what I get is the 2x. I can factor out e to the x squared y, and what survived is 1 plus y x squared. 1 plus y x squared, which is the same as 1 plus x squared y. That's the left side. The right side. It's a product. x squared has x's, and e to the x squared y has x's. And you want the partial with respect to x. So it's the derivative of the first, which is 2x times the second, plus the first, which is x squared, times the partial of the second with respect to x. So you're going to get e to the x squared y times the derivative of that. y is a constant. The derivative of x squared is 2x. So I can factor out a 2x, and I can factor out an e to the x squared y. And what survived, since nothing is left on the left term, you realize there's always a 1, a plus sign, and I backed it out to 2x. So you have x squared times y, x squared y. And you say, oh yeah, yeah, these are equal. So yes, it is conservative. Big F of x is conservative. Now you come back to here, and you say, well, that must be fx, so what can f be? Or, you can come here and say, that's fy, what can f be? Well, I choose the first one. We're told that fx is 2xy e to the x squared y. Now, the first thing I would do is say, well, y's are constants here. But let's just ignore the y. Okay. What do I take the partial of with, to, with respect to x to get this? Now, believe it or not, I'm going to put that 2 back. Because the partial of this you know, is 2xy. Maybe I shouldn't have backed it out. This one just screaming in our face has the answer. The partial of this with respect to x is this times the partial of the power with respect to x, which is 2xy. That is, if you understood a word I said, the answer is e to the x squared y because fx is the derivative or partial of e to the anything is e to the anything times the partial of the power with respect to x, which is 2xy. That's exactly what we wanted to get. So, plus k. Okay, so there is our answer. Let me erase what a little check there. Now you can try from the get-go to figure out if it worked. But then when you found f of xy based on f of x, you have to check if it worked for f of y as well. Unless you check for conservative, then you don't have to worry. 
And the next thing is to find the curl. If you are told, and this is very mechanical, you're told f of x, y is partial with respect to x, with respect to y. Oh. Yeah, let me just erase this. Suppose you're told that the gradient is x, y, z, i plus y, j plus z, k. And you want to find the curl at 1, 2, 1. You want to find the curl at 1, 2, 1. And the curl of f of x, y, z is a determinant partial with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z, i, j, k, the i component, the j component, the k component. It is this determinant. And how you find a determinant like this is you repeat the first and second column at the end. That is, you write down the determinant a second time. There it is. And you repeat the first column. And you repeat the second column. So, it'll be this product. The partial of z with respect to y. Well, that's zero. Times i is zero. Then it's this product. It's the partial of x, y, z with respect to z, which is x, y in their j direction. Plus this partial, the partial of y with respect to x, which is zero times k is still zero, minus. Now we go this direction. The partial with respect to y of x, y, z is x, z. Times this, believe it or not, is k. My plus that. The partial of z with respect to y is zero. Times i is zero i. The partial with respect to x of z is 0, times j is just 0. So what we got is x, y, j minus x, z in the k direction. That's the curl of x, y, z. This here is the curl of f of x, y, z. But I don't really want the curl of f of x, y, z. I want it of 1, 2, 1. So x is 1, y is 2, x is 1. 1 times 2 is 2, times j is 2j. Minus 1 times 1 is 1, times k is 1k. And there it is. That's the curl at that particular point. The curl is just a determinant. It's three by three determinant. Now, you can use the curl to determine if a determ excuse me, if a vector field is conservative or not. If you're given f of x, y, z equals e to the z, y in the i direction plus e to the z, x in the j direction 
plus e to the v times x, y in the k direction. Is this, now f, big F is the gradient. Is this gradient conservative or not? Is this gradient conservative? Well, believe it or not, it depends if the curl is zero or not. If the curl is zero, then it is conservative. E to the dy, e to the dx, e to the dxy. Why don't we just get right into repeating those two columns? So partial with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z, i, j, k, repeat i, repeat, repeat i correctly, repeat j, e to the z x. And the curl is going to equal to this product. The partial of this with respect to y is e to the dx times i. Plus, the partial of this with respect to z is e to the dy in the j direction. Plus, the partial of this with respect to x is e to the z in the k direction. Minus this product with respect to y, the partial of that is e to the z in the k direction. Plus this one, the partial of z of e to the zx. That is e to the dx in the i direction plus this product, the partial of x of e to the z x y. This is a constant times x. The derivative is the constant in the j direction. In the j direction. It turns out that this mess is zero. Because e to the di, e to the dxi, and e to the dxy are being subtracted. e to the zyj, e to the dyj are being subtracted. E to positive e to the zk, positive e to the zk are being subtracted. We get zero. That means conservative. Now it pays to try to find little f. Now it pays to try to find little f. This here is f sub x. This here is f sub y. This here is x sub z. Pick any one of them and find little f. If little f of x of x, y, and z is equal to e to the z, y, e to the z times y, that implies that f of x, y, z must be x times e to the z, y, plus some constant. Kind of and if you told me that f, y was e to the z, x, then I would tell you f must be e to the z, x, y. This is exactly what I have. I mean, of course, we probably should write it this way. If the partial of, if that's the partial of f sub z, then f of x, y must be e to the z, x, y. But that's what I got all three times. That's why we check for conservativeness. It makes life easier. You don't have to bother finding 
the antiderivative, antipartials. And see if they're all three equal. Just because two of them are equal don't mean all three of them would be. Again, if the curl does not equal zero, if the curl does not equal zero, then you should not even bother to find if the curl of the gradient is not zero, you shouldn't even bother to find uh, a potential vector field. Suppose you were told that, that f of x, y, z was 1, 2x, 3y. Just different notation. It means 1i plus 2xj plus 3yk. And you're told that g of x, y, z happens to be x, negative y, z. Okay. Your goal is to find the curl of f cross g. That is what we want to know. Well, we find f cross g, which is a vector, call it h, and then we find the curl of that vector h. F cross G isn't hot. It's 1, 2X, 3Y, X, negative Y, Z. Repeat the first two columns. I, J, K, I, J. So it's that product, which is 2XVI plus this product, which is 3xyj, plus that product, which happens to be minus yk, minus this product, which is 2x squared times k, plus negative 3y squared i, which I'll just write as negative 3y squared i, plus vj, plus zj. Okay, eyes. Eyes and eyes. Remember, we're subtracting. So we have 2xz minus a negative 3y squared i. How many j's? We have 3xy here, and we are taking away z. j's plus k. We're taking away yk, then we're taking away 2x squared k's. If you want to, you can factor out the minus sign or the negative sign, and those become plus. That's our vector h. This is what I called h. We want to find the curl of that vector. But I'll just set this one up. Finding the curl of that vector is no big deal. You put the i component down. You put the j component down. You put the k component down. Partial with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z, i, j, k. We just want that determinant. That would be the curl. When you find the curl of a vector, it is a vector. It is a vector. So, we can talk about the curl of the curl of f. I mean, f is equal to whatever you, did, you calculate the curl of f by doing the determinant like I did down here. And then you get another vector. 
call this vector g. So now you just want the curl of g. So this curl. You can find curl of vectors all day long. The curl of f is a vector. So you can find the curl of that. That is, you can find, let's say it again, the curl of f is a vector. So you can find the curl of f. But this is a vector, and the curl of the vector is a vector. So this is a vector. So now you can find the curl of that. And you can keep doing this forever. You can find the curl of the curl of the curl of the curl of the vector now. You can find the curl of any vector in space. It has to be three dimensions. Now we want to find something called the div, D-I-V. Suppose you're given f of x, y, z. And it's x, y, z, i plus y, j plus z, k. We want to find the div at 1, 2, 1 again. You want to find the div of f of x, y, z. I'm going to find the div of that. Well, the div is the partial of the i component with x. It, it's f, the div is fx plus fy plus fz fx is yz plus fy is 1 plus fz is 1. So that's the diff. That's the diff. And if you want it at a particular point, the div of 1, 2, 1 is, well, so this is yz plus 2 or 2 plus yz. Well, y times z is 2 plus another 2 is 4. So, all of these are straightforward. You just have to know that the div of f is f sub x, f sub y, calculate f sub y, calculate f sub z, add them up, add them up. This is the div of f of x, y, z. So let's just do one more. Let's find the div of a curl. Come to know that f of x, y, z is x, y, z, y, z. You want to find the div of the curve. Well, what does that equal? Well, first you the div of the curl of f. The first you want to find the curl of f. The curl of f. Well, that's straightforward. It's x, y, z, y, z, partial with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z, i, j, k, i, partial x, x, y, z, repeating the first two columns, that's all. So it's this product which is the partial with respect to y of z, which is 0 times i, 0. And now the partial of z, the partial of z of x, y, z is x, y. And it is, it is in the j direction. 
and the partial with respect to x of y is 0 minus the partial of x, y, z with, with respect to y is x, z that's in the k direction and this partial is 0 and so is this one so I think we've done this one before we get x, y, j minus x, z, k well that's the curve now keep in mind that this is a 0i plus x, y, j minus x, z, k that's some vector it happens to have a name it's the curl of f so now what is the div of this vector what is the div of it well it's the partial of this with respect to x which is 0 plus the partial of that with respect to y which is x plus the partial of this with respect to z which is negative x and coincidentally the answer is 0 Okay, so you can find div of any vector whether it's a curl of f or you can find just the div of f you can find the div of k or j you can name it you can name the vector whatever you want okay that completes this section on vector fields